All right, today we're going to put together a video on how to change the uh, upper and lower control arms on a Jeep Grand Cherokee. This Jeep has been in Canada all its life, so the uh, clevis bolts are going to be very hard to remove. So this is a bit different video than the other ones you'll see on YouTube. So this has already been lifted on the back by two inches with uh, Rough Country spacers and uh, Bilstein shocks, 5100s. Hopefully you can see a bit of that. The spacers are on the top of the uh, shock. Doing the back is pretty easy. You could uh, change the spring without removing the uh, link off of the suspension if you were to use an internal spring compressor. I didn't have that so it takes a, a bit more work. So we'll look at the tools to do this job. It's quite involved actually. So you want to have a, a 3 8 or half inch impact gun. You want a three and a half ton jack and jack stands. And I've got a, a three quarter inch impact gun with a half inch adapter. You'll need a uh, 33, 36 millimeter for the uh, take off the uh, axle ends. You need an external spring compressor for this because it's got struts. You need a power bar. You need pickle forks. You need to have a ball joint breaker. I haven't used that one on the Jeep yet. I'm not sure if it's going to work or not. Then you need uh, to do the inner tie rods. You'll need something like this, or you can. Uh, there's other tools like pipe wrenches that you can use to, to get that done. This is an experiment for me. Definitely need safety glasses, ear protection. Need some spray because you don't want to breathe the uh, brake dust. Need new shock mount, top and lower for springs rather. Then uh, for the clevis bolts, which I'll show you in a second, I've been told you can draw cut them out with the, uh, a grinder. I'm not sure if that's really possible as far as access goes. So I've also got a, a sawzall to work on that. Got some sway bar links. Rubber stuff is all from Crown. It's a bit cheaper than uh, Chrysler. Then uh, Moog, so the tie rod ends. Outer, inner. Never done inners before. We'll see how that goes. Inch and a half spacers. We're going to be doing a bit of a lift on this. So then, uh, Lower control arms. These clevis bolts are the big problem here. We'll see uh, how that goes. I think I'm going to spend a lot of time getting these out. I tried earlier with my impact gun. It's 1,200 foot pounds. I could get the nuts off the old ones, but I could not spin the bolt. So it's probably going to be pretty miserable. I'm changing the entire arm because my ball joints are bad. And then the rubber is coming out of this bushing. And uh, if you're just going to do that much work, you might as well just replace the whole control arm rather than rebuilding it and wasting your time doing that. Got the Bilstein 5100s. You can see how you can adjust the height with these notches. I'm going to make it as tall as I can. Match the rear lift that I did. Then the Moog upper control arms. They have uh, normal and heavy duty ones. The heavy duty ones are greasable. So I went with that being a, the lift. Concerned that it might wear out the upper control arms a bit quicker. You can see with the uh, lowers, they only offer one variety of that, and uh, it's not reasonable. Comes with one faster there, not a lot. So we'll get the Jeep in the air and we'll start tearing it apart. All right, so here we go. We lifted the uh, Jeep up by a lower control arm. There's a notch there. You can use that for the uh, factory jack that comes with the vehicle as well. So, two jack stands, so I put them uh, underneath of the uh, cross member in the, the part of the frame. If, depending on the crown conditions, you can put some uh, wood underneath your jack stands, but I got two here. I'm pretty comfortable with that. The, obviously, if it's going to be sinking into the asphalt or something, you want to do something better than that. So, we'll hook this up to the uh, camera stand and get to work. In the instructions they say you need to remove the wheel bearings to do this job. I saw one video where the gentleman did not so I'm hoping we can go that route and leave it together. I changed the wheel bearings recently so it wouldn't be too hard but rather not. You could do this by hand, but I've done my time with that. After so many years, there's some battery operated tools. Kind of skip the generation.
should get something out there to get the brake fire for off. millimeter see if this fits ah, like that turn the wheel get more exercise if you did it by hand. It's actually quite hot at the day. side. Yeah, it's 21 on the other side. 24 on the big side. That's what you're trying to avoid. something to hold that up and we'll get back to it all right so we're back now I got the uh, brake caliper hooked up on the brake line while I was off camera I got the uh, ABS sensor taken off and just put onto the side here I tried to hit the uh, clevis bolt with a sledge it didn't move which was expected so uh, we're gonna start to take this apart the hope is I can get the uh, mount for the uh, wheel bearing to come off so we can uh, start disassembling the uh, lower control arm. Just use an 18 millimeter to take off the uh, sway bar. It's no big deal. 18 millimeter here. You have to use a uh, universal joint for this, which is not really good. Always plan for the universal joint to explode in your face, so keep away from it. Tie rod end is a 21 millimeter.
turns out that this ball joint separator doesn't fit on anything, so don't bother with this. There's other styles. What you'll see is that it's not long enough to reach over the uh, stud. In the same case on the uh, tie rod end, it's not quite long enough to reach. Then on the ball joint, it's uh, the wrong orientation. You would need this to be facing down, so you're not going to be able to get that to fit in there. Ball joint's 21 millimeter, so you either dig a hole here with the shovel, try to use a shorter one. You'll find that the suspension droops on this quite a bit. You can try to lift it up. So you see if we pop anything off here with the hammer. Just a two pound hammer. Oh, that's pretty easy, that's nice. Also easy, things are going good. Good spot to swing here. Ha, who would have thought? There you go, got your uh, spindle off. So, next step is going to be to try to get this thing out of here, which is going to be pretty miserable. See if a grinder will fit. You could probably make it fit if you took the guards off, but uh, it's not really a suggested way of doing things. The Sawzall blade is probably the better out of the ones available. So you want to avoid damaging that. Now, I'm going to do that. You have to cut it off on both sides somehow. going to be a, a long operation with the hardened steel so we probably won't videotape all of this but in the end we got to cut off this clevis bolt on either side of the inside of the clevis so we can pull it out and then if you're going to rebuild the control arm you could push it out at that point but in my case I'm just going to throw the control arms out so we'll go from there Alright, so I went and picked up some 5 inch blades for my old 5 uh, inch cutoff wheel. So I'm going to hopefully be able to get the, this thing taken apart now. Using the sawzall didn't seem like it was going to be very fun. I'll try not to damage the uh, fork here. We'll go after the bolt mainly. Hammer's going to move around a bit. It's on a piece of plywood now. That's why you keep your guard on. That didn't work out very well, did it? All right, come up with another plan. 
All right, so we're halfway through the bolt on this side, so we're gonna try to go through it as slowly as possible here. Getting there. Let's see if we can break it off now. Nope. Might have to oh, need another blade again. It's already damaged. Now I took uh, three blades to cut the uh, bolts off, but we got it, so if things popped off, so now I'll try to get the control arm out of there. A little bit hot. Seems to me that the uh, bolts are actually seized to the uh, fork here, so we'll see if we can get them out without a lot of trouble. Let's see what kind of fasteners we're holding this on. Pretty big, probably 21 or something, say 24. the universal it's not a lot of spot space. Let's see how this goes. When you buy a socket set, make sure you don't buy one that skips the 18. All the cheap ones do.
you have with the lower control arm. So we ended up damaging it with the cutoff wheel. Good gouge in there, but that's all right. We're going to replace it. Clevis bolt in there, pretty good. It's never going to come out. The ball joint is loose. When you grabbed it by the wheel, you could actually make the wheel go up and down. And then this bushing at the back here is destroyed. Again, so why would you waste your time trying to rebuild this thing? You can just throw it out and put in another one. So the next step is going to be to get the uh, shock out so we can drive the uh, bolts out. Alright, we'll see if we can get this out without using gas and the torches. There's one. Not going to be able to do that on the vehicle, that's for sure. Next one is going to take a bit of thinking. Probably need to get a trip. Be worth just buying new forks and skipping all this. Try to loosen up on the other side. I wish I hadn't rounded this off, it could have been helpful. So you have a car with salted roads, that's what you're looking at dealing with. I'll clean that out with a rat tail file. Alright. So there you go. The rest of the job is just the uh, same as you'll see in the other uh, videos and doing lifts and changing ball joints. Alright, so we got the uh, shock absorber changed now. Getting ready to put in the uh, lower control arm. Started looking at doing the inner tie rod end. I realized the uh, boot retaining strap is quite far in and I don't have the proper tool to crimp on a new strap so I'm going to leave that for the alignment shop to take care of when they have to do the alignment of the uh, lower control arm mainly so I'm going to change the uh, outer tie rod end now so it's 24 millimeter on the uh, jam nut and uh, the flat on the uh, tie rod end is bigger than that so I don't believe I have a wrench that big so we're going to use a pipe wrench. Hopefully you go the right way with it, otherwise it's not going to behave. So we're going to do like this. And we have a light on it. 
see what we can get. There. Once you get that off, this they always say to count the turns, so we'll go through that experience. I believe I jammed that close to where it started. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, we'll save 24 in a bit. On both sides, yeah, there's got a left marked on both of them. 24 and a bit. Started, so that's a bit. One, two, three, So pretty much lined right where we started, so that's great. Getting the lower control arm lined up is not going to be a very easy task. So I'll try to get the heads of the uh, fasteners in where they started just to match the uh, dust marks and go from, let the uh, alignment shop do the rest. I'm not going to bother measuring this. So I got to uh, put the uh, grease fitting in here. Seven millimeter, they're kind of fidgety to get going. That's probably why they don't do it. Because there's no reason you should break these transporting them. Get ready for a bit of a messing around. That's good. Reset. And I'm not been tightening anything until uh, I get the vehicle kind of in a, a normal position. Clevis bolt and this front control arm bolt are actually the same. When you order the parts from Chrysler, they update the clevis notch a little bit. Save the suspense and do that part later. 
As I said, now the uh, keeper is on the opposite side. Imagine that catches on something eventually. He's going from below. Can't wait to see a bit other than the back of my head. So I put copper anti-seize on everything. Hopefully it makes life easier down the road. Yes, yeah, so if you had to change the CV joint, I think you'd have to go through the same situation of uh, cutting all this off in order to get the axle through. Be quite a pain. When I took this to the garage. They were going to charge me well over a thousand dollars labor to do this work, so I decided to buy all new parts and do it myself instead. I'll need to use Jack to bring that up. But there you go, you can see uh, the extent of the job if you have a, a vehicle that's got a rusty clevis bolt. Thank you very much. Alright, I decided to add a bit more to the video. For preparing the uh, vehicle for adding wheel spacers, it's important that your wheels and your brake discs are good and flat so nothing comes loose later on. So, what I've done is uh, scrape the face of the uh, rotor and also on the inside and clean this out here so that fits nicely on the uh, wheel bearing. Basically you just go across on a bit of an angle and scrape everything off then you can paint it with some kind of uh, chassis paint. And You do the same thing with the wheels so you can see the difference. I gotta work on this one a little bit more but uh, trying to get the, the wheel surface flat or rides around here compared to the, uh, the other wheel. I haven't really looked at it too much but it's going to need a, a bit of attention. Back wheels are quite a bit worse. So you want to get that done properly so that your uh, wheel spacers don't come loose shortly after you put them on.
All right, now to put on the wheel spacer. Now that you've got everything good and clean on the back, you got a bit of anti-seize on the hub. Put on the uh, spacer. The uh, spider tracks come with a bit of Loctite, which is excellent to use. So just put a bead across each of the studs. Use red Loctite. Get the spacer on. They are hub centric, but you still need to uh, work with them a little bit uh, to get them to fit. It's not a spider tracks issue, it's any of them would be like this. So what I like to do is get one nut just till it's touching, then put the opposite side in. So to get it good, do a bit of tapping around. Just tighten it up by hand a little bit. See it added a bit. And to get the uh, spacer to center, you tap it a little bit more. Kind of saves you the uh, drive. You still have to drive this for, uh, I think they want you to do 50 miles or something. But if you can get everything snug to begin with, when you go to retorque it, you'll be happy to find that nothing has moved. So you go through this, if you have someone available to put the brakes on, that's great. I saw another video where a person put a bar through the studs. I'm not sure if I, I like that or not, but it is a, a way of doing it if you're doing it single-handed, so to speak. So that's really what I wanted to talk about was making sure that everything is flat when you start here and then uh, to get everything centered. So then you tighten these up and they call for 90 foot pounds. So this is about the only place I use a torque wrench. Everything else I just do by feel. But you do not want to have a problem with uh, this part here. And they say not to use uh, an impact gun on this. pretty good so I'll have to get someone to put the brake help with the brakes there so they can hold them on then I'll do the final torquing put the wheels on take it for a drive take the wheels off verify the torque which will be okay I'm sure and then be, uh, be able to sleep at night knowing I need to take the wheels off again to check that out all right so that's the final end of the job the uh, front wheels are sitting 23 inches from the center to the uh, lip of the fender and then the rear wheels are at 21 inches. I didn't change the springs on this vehicle and I think I got about uh, two inches of lift on the back with the two inch uh, rough country spacers and right now about three inches of lift on the front. I think that's going to settle down a little bit. So uh, there you have it. I realized I didn't show the uh, wheel spacer side view so uh, you can see they're just peeking out of the fender a little bit there with uh, inch and a half spacers. Just do a quick walk around of the vehicle. Can't get a very good zoom here for you, sorry. Added the uh, Jeep OEM aftermarket mud flaps on this vehicle. There you can see the wheels sticking out just a little bit. There's a spider track sticker. Bilstein provides a sticker, but it's kind of large, so I just toss it out. The van over here has got Bilstein's on it as well. It helps quite a bit. Alright. Just getting ready to do a little bit of work on the front drive shaft right now.